All right, so I've got all the major parts of my creature together. I'm working on individual uh, level adjustments. I have to finish up the back leg here and this uh, tail fruit thing. Start with this back leg. Whoops, wrong layer. I'm making a lot of use of the, the auto layer selection move tool option. So I'm, the way you, you push the brightness and contrast, and you'll hear that all the time in, in photo adjusting, you know, you maximize the histogram. You bring your, your highlights to the edge of the curve. You bring your shadows to the edge of the curve. That's to, to get the most out of the brightness and contrast. And if something's fully lit, that makes sense. If it's on the underside of something, you might lessen that. But that also brings out the color and kind of pushes it in a way I'm not as fond of. So I'm going to put more red into there, more magenta. There we go, a little more to match the pine cone. Then the highlights, I might push it. A little bit cyan and the shadows push it a little bit as well. So I love digital art because you can just play with those sliders and kind of get it where you want. Then you might go fully to hue saturation and just take the saturation down a little bit or even play with the overall spectrum of it. As long as you don't push it too far and lose the different pixel qualities. But I like how these colors are now kind of picking up some of those colors. That doesn't feel so foreign. Maybe even lighten it up slightly. Okay. That allows me to push this tail a little bit further than I did before. I don't need to worry about all the stuff behind that's going to get cut out. I'm really looking at the tail and its levels. There we go. And then I can play with its color. I'm going to just going to go right to hue saturation and shift its spectrum a little bit, take its saturation down a tiny bit. And that sets me up to do something with this. First with levels, push. Let's see. I'm not sure yet. Push the highlights a little bit, push the shadows quite a bit, but they're too colorful. Got a hue saturation. Let's change its spectrum a little bit. Really take its saturation down quite a bit. Push its lightness, then go to color balance. Give it a little bit more complexity in its shadows, more towards the cyans and the blues, a little bit more magenta, and the highlights allow some of that yellow to come through. Then go to hue saturation and maybe just take the saturation overall down a little bit more. There we go. So that's starting to match better. keep flipping it, not knowing if I want it. Yeah, I kind of like it now angled up with that lighting. So now that the lighting's not so severe, I can see how I can make this work a little bit better. And in Photoshop, it's okay if it goes off the edge. It won't lose content if it goes off of your edge. But I want to reposition it so it fits on the edge when possible. So I'll keep it there. I can always transform it and just push that edge a little bit closer on, like rolling dough. Okay. So, the yellows, yeah, there's little issues in here. I'm not sure what's going on. I've got an empty gap there. That's a problem. Um, that might be something where I can use more reference if needed. That might be a good place to use the 
yeah, this, some of the other reference I got, but we'll see. I'm going to show you how we can do a lot of that with clone stamp as well. So this is a good place to save. I've got all my components and it's making a pretty interesting silhouette. Uh, some things I'm not crazy about. I need a shadow behind this ear so that that ear really shows up better. I need to work on that neck so that those textures really blend together. And most of all, I need to cut everything out. So, and I might need that back leg to show. <laughs> so because there might be an internal edge here I don't have yet, before I, I merge things together, I'm going to try to cut out from this layer this bottom edge. I love these spikes though on the belly. It's all the spiked creatures in the world that truly exist don't have spikes on their stomach for pretty obvious practical reasons. But it's just not as cool as having spikes on your stomach. In my opinion. So I'm going to take all of that out so that I can see in the anatomy if I need a, a back foot to be showing. Command D to deselect. And I do need one, but I don't need it there. So what I need to do is take from the layer with the tail where that foot is, take that foot, <laughs> I'm gonna command exit, so I can paste it on a new layer. And then I get to position it where I want. Now the problem is this is the exact same foot I'm using there. And even though I changed the colors a little bit and warped it a little bit, I don't want it to be too copy pasty. So what I'm going to do is I am going to flip the foot. Transform, flip horizontal. So instead of just flipping it, because that didn't work left to right, I'm going to warp just the foot individually so that it has a little bit of where this feels like the dominant toe. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to cut that out roughly because I only need the bottom. About that much. I'm going to select the inverse and then just delete. Now let me move this where I think it should go with my anatomy. And this is where I draw the space between joints. Right. And I'm going to transform it, make it a little bit smaller, angle it. So I might see it about there within this anatomy. But that's an outside edge I would have to cut out complicated as it is. All right, so let's do this. So now what do I do? I'm going to turn off the background layer and instead put a new layer on top of it that I fill, edit fill, with 50% gray. So it covers up my sketch. And what I do is I'm going to turn that off. I go to the very top and I hold down Option and I say Layer Merge Visible. This puts everything onto one layer, right? Then I turn off my groups. I turn off my individual components. And if I'm smart <laughs> and organized, I would put those into a group as well. Everything underneath the head and torso. Let's call this Group 3. Turn that off, turn on the background, and now I can cut everything out of just one layer, and I can dodge and burn on just one layer. 
and I can make it work. Sometimes it's helpful to have another background layer that's black. So I say edit fill. I made a duplicate of that gray. I'm going to fill it with black. And that helps me see little debris I might miss that I'll need to cut out. And then a third one, if you want to fully check your bases, edit fill with 100% white. So we want it to look good on all three of these. And ultimately, when we save it, we'll turn off all the backgrounds and just save it as a PNG. So first, let me, uh, let me do it on gray. I'll start by the head. And first, I'm going to take the hard textures. Whoops. Take the hard textures and just use my lasso and cut them out. Especially where they appear somewhat soft from my soft erasing, this can reestablish them as a defined organic edge. Remember, in computers, you can always soften things. It's a lot harder to sharpen things that are soft than to soften things that are sharp. So we want to err on the side of having our edges too sharp to begin with. All these little buck teeth. And remember, you can do it in sections, like so. Whoops, wrong layer. <laughs> Okay, there we go. See, nicely cut out. Now that tooth has some prominence. To the underside here. I don't want to cut a scale off in the middle. That would look weird. Now I'm going to show you some soft textures too. I try to always do a design that has hard textures like scales or reptile skin, but then also feathers. Where it gets really tough here, you just have to be patient and get kind of a rhythm. This is going to help us with digital painting and even uh, doing spot illustration coloring and stuff later on. We have to start getting comfortable with these tablets having them work predictably. Not being afraid to cut in a little bit. And deleting them in sections. If you ever mess up, as you're selecting, you can hold down, you can modify your selection by using shift and option. Shift adds to the selection, options subtracts from it before you hit delete. So now we're getting into some soft edges with this fur. So I'm going to leave a lot of that, give it some birth but where there's individual hairs that I can define, I'll go ahead and do that. And the claws are nice and sharp. So much of Photoshop is just getting good selections being patient. Zooming in when you have to, but not zooming in so much that you can't actually cover some ground. I like to zoom in basically to about 100% in terms of the pixels. Right now I'm at 50%. You can see it in the bottom right hand corner of the Photoshop window what resolution you're seeing in. But it doesn't make sense to ever zoom in more than 100% because then you're, you're seeing, if you zoom in more than 100%, you're seeing more than one pixel for every pixel it's actually created. If I zoom in more, this is 200.